Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's. This is a place where? Amen. Today is our BBS closing service. Even though we only had one day of BBS last week, um, this Thursday we gathered together with nine kids. Pretty good. And we had a party, a pizza party extraordinaire. We threw water balloons. We made bracelets. Um, we made little uh, slingshots, and that was a blast. We went outside and did all the good stuff. And, uh, and we also sang, and we also danced. So what are we going to do today? We are going to sing, and we're going to dance. So I will turn your attention to just two songs in our bulletin today. Our, right after the absolution. And we have the Old Testament canticle, and that comes from the service of prayer and preaching. And what we did was we made like a rock and roll version of it. Um, so I put the music in there as sort of like a guide. <laughs> it's not exact, but it will help you uh, as you sing along to the Old Testament canticle. There's a few liberties that are taken, but um, this will most certainly help you get through the song, okay? Uh, also, right before the sermon, we're going to do our... Theme song and dance. Okay, I'm gonna stretch out just a little bit and I'm gonna teach you the dance that we did today, or last week, uh, for awesome God. It's pretty easy, not too complicated. I think we can all do it. Uh, it'll be fun. With that, let me turn your attention to reflecting as light. A couple announcements to throw your way. It is September, things are changing. Coffee hour today. Yes, coffee hour is back. So after the service, head on downstairs, grab some coffee, grab some refreshments, and hang out with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Bible study is back this week. Uh, so Tuesday at 11 and Thursday at 7 on Zoom, we'll be back with our 1 Corinthians study. Uh, we're finishing up 1 Corinthians chapter 11, which has everything to do with the Lord's Supper. Sunday school resumes next Sunday, September 11th, uh, at 9.15 a.m. down in the Fellowship Hall. We'll begin with a, a little mass group. We'll hang out, and then we'll divide into our individual groups. Under updates and information, the first one there, as noted at our last voters meeting, uh, we will be changing up our communion practice just a little bit as we continue to move forward safely and faithfully. We're going to be utilizing the altar rail once again, at the beginning of the next week, okay? Um, so as we move forward in increments, uh, we're still going to use the individual cups at this moment, okay? And we're still going to offer the individual chalices as we have been until our current supply runs out. Um, we have, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 something left, okay? We won't be reordering, so until those run out, we'll be offering them. But next week, we will be utilizing the altar rail as we have been. You know, coming up the front, dismissing in tables, gathering in tables. Um, hopefully, you remember how to do that. It's been a while. <laughs> but we will, uh, we will be doing that next week. Uh, I think that's it for the announcements. Looking forward to coffee hour after the service. Looking forward to our song and dance today. Uh, may God fill us with his grace and his blessings as he reminds us that he is the hero. He is the savior. And we reap the benefits of our good and awesome God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for gathering us here in this place to receive them. Thank you for your son's body and blood that we get to receive in the supper today. Bless us. Fill us with your grace and your peace. Fill us with your spirits and guide us in all truth. We pray these things. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Please stand for our opening hymn.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a few moments of silent reflection as we place our lives in the light of God's Word. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, one of the songs that we sang at PBS this week was the Old Testament Canticle. Again, I have the music there for you to help guide you, um, but uh, we will sing that. The Lord God Today is 1 Samuel 17, 
chapter, verse 1 to 54, the verse. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, battle, and they were gathered to Soka, which belongs to Judah, and the camp between Soka and Ezekiel, and Ephesidane. And the soul, the men of Israel, were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah, and drew up the line against the Philistines. Philistines and the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of God, whose height was six cubits and a span, and he had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of bronze. <clears throat> and he had bronze armor on his legs, and the javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. And the shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out and drawn up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, and he shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man who will fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words, the Philistine, and they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of an Ephraim, and of Bethlehem, Judah, named Jesse, who had eight sons in the days of Saul. The man was already old and advanced in years. The three oldest sons of Jesse had followed Saul into battle and were the names of the three sons who went into battle with Elab, the firstborn, next to him, Abinadab, and the third, Shemra. David was the youngest of the three eldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistines came towards and took his stand morning and evening. And Jesse said to David, his son, Take for your brothers and Ephah of this parched grain and ten loaves, and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers. And take these ten cheeses to the commander of the thousand, their thousand. See if your brothers are well, and bring some token from them. Now Saul and, and they had all the men of Israel who were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took the provisions and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment as the host was going out to battle, shouting the war cry. And Israel and the Philistines drew up for the battle, army against army. And David left the things in charge of the keeper and the baggage and ran to the ranks and greeted his brothers as he talked with them. Behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the name of the words before. And David heard them. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. And the men of Israel, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel and the king will enrich the man who kills him, and the great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David said to the man who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in the same way, So shall it be done to the man who kills him. Now Elab, the eldest brother, 
heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. He said, Why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption and the evil in your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What have I done? Now, was, was it not a word? And he who turned from him towards another and spoke in the same way, and the people answered him again as before. When the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul and sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fill because of him, and your servant will go and fight with his Philistines. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth. And he has been a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear, I took a lamb from the flock. And I went after him and struck him and delivered him out of his mouth. And he rose against me. And if he rose against me, I caught him with his beard and struck him and killed him. The servants has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, will deliver me from the herd hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David snapped his sword over his armor. And he tried to vain to go, but he had not tested it. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. And he took a staff from his hand and chose five smooth stones from his brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. And he slunk, and he slunk, and his sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistines. And the Philistine moved to forward and came nearer to David his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, I am a dog that you come to me with sticks. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give you the flesh of the birds and the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down, cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the hosts of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that there is that men, all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into his hand. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out the stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into the forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and took, stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheep and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and Judah rose and shouted, pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekwam. So the so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way in Charan and in the Gath and 
Ekron. And the people of Israel came back from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their camp. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, and he put his armor in his tent. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospels. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And I'll have you remain standing as I teach you a dance. All right, today's dance uh, for our PBS closing service comes from the song, Awesome God. Uh, you might know that song, right? Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom and power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Uh, it's going to be a, a little different version that you may remember, but the chorus is the same. Uh, so the first thing we're going to teach you is the chorus. Uh, begins with our God. You're going to take your hands and you're going to point them up into a corner. Okay, our God, like you're pointing up. And then you're going to go the opposite direction. And you're going to put your hands out sort of like karate chop. All right? Our God is an awesome God. All right? One, two, three. Okay? Our God is an awesome God. All right? He reigns. All right? You're going to stand with chest proud. He reigns. From heaven above, you're going to point up. Right, so he reigns from heaven above with wisdom. All right, point to your head. Uh, and power, draw for biceps. All right, and love, good. Our God is an awesome God. You know, I forgot to call up our kids, too. Rowan, why don't you come on up here? Cam, you want to come on up? Come on up, bro. Be a good example here. So everybody, because you guys know it. You guys know the song. All right, so all together, it's our God is an awesome God. He reigns, all right, from heaven above with wisdom and power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Not bad, all right? So now the verses, we're going to do some just uh, really easy movements. The first one is going to go like this, all right? going to go back, arms twirl on a count of one, two, three, and clap. Turn to the other side, and one, two, three, and clap. One, two, three, clap. One, two, three, clap. Go back to the other side. This time we're going to make, we're making a pizza. Okay, making a pizza, three, four, and other side, pizza, two, three, four, and pizza, two, three, four, and pizza, two, three, four, good. And then we're going to do a step, and then another step. Really simple, all right? And then go back the other way, step, and step, back, step, and step, and step, and step. Good. And then the fourth one is freestyle. Whatever you want to do. Okay? Your go-to dance move at the wedding party. Whatever you got in you. Um, even if you just want to stand there too. You can't. But, all right. Just a little dance move. Okay? And then we'll come back to our God. Is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. And power and love, our God is an awesome God. Okay? In the very, very end, we're going to do a stomp, stomp, clap. Stomp, stomp, clap. I'll call that out as we get there. Okay? All right? I think we got it. Why don't you say that? Go. Our God, awesome God, reigns from heaven above 
this answer. It's one that I've observed from my own childhood and one from being a dad now with my, my own son. Why do we love this superhero stuff? Well, I remember as a kid, I had a favorite superhero, a bunch of them. And I wanted to be them. I wanted to be the hero. Now, I'm not making a case here that we shouldn't watch Marvel movies or read comic books or encourage imaginative play. We're saying there's, there's something inside of us that carries over from all that. It's that doesn't want to be vulnerable, that wants to be in control. <laughs> Anybody out there love having control? <laughs> yeah, we all do. Uh, anyone out there um, not like being weak or powerless? It's not too much of a stretch to say that we want to be the hero of our story. And why wouldn't we? We look around, and just in our world, there's so much evil in the world. There's so many bad things. There's so much that if we had the power, we would want to fight, or fix, or heal, or make right. Superhero stories, they give us some temporary respite in control or maybe even controlled morality. And maybe you have an answer ready for that old question. If you could have any superpower in the world, what would you have? Roman and I were discussing that in the car the other day, and uh, we decided that my superpower would be able to snap my fingers and turn all the lights green. <laughs> well, that would be an awesome superpower, right? Late to work, well, there you go. <laughs> but there's the thing. And even if we, even if we put down the comic books, even if we're uh, not in love with the Marvel movies, we'll just move on to something else that shows us that, that someone can bring order to the chaos, help to the helpless, life to death. And we'll search those things out, wanting to be the hero of the story, and whether it's self-help books, or a program, or a spiritual discipline, the right psychological approach. We crave these things. And during our, our VBS Peace Party Extraordinaire, bless you, uh, this Thursday, uh, we read from the Jesus Storybook Bible. Now, uh, the Jesus Storybook Bible is an absolutely fantastic book for kids. If you don't have one, by the way, uh, or you know kid that would like one, please see me afterwards. I will get you one. I have some copies. I, I need you to have this book, all right? The Jesus Storybook Bible. We read a story entitled The Young Hero and the Horrible Giant. But you can guess what story that is. David and Goliath, right? This morning I thought it would be nice to hear the entire story. When's the last time you just sat down and read or heard the entire story of David and Goliath, almost the full chapter of 1 Samuel 17. We're expecting two pages worth of scripture readings today, all right? But it's cool to get the entire story. Uh, the Jesus Storybook Bible obviously condenses it for the kids. Um, so we've got the young hero, David. He's an unassuming shepherd boy. And we've got the horrible giant. Goliath, mighty warrior, big guy, terrifying monster of man, something, uh, if we get the translation right, over nine feet tall. This dude is huge, right? <laughs> There's a reason that God's people are cowered in fear. No one wants to go up against him. No one dared to go out and fight him. But of course, that's the crazy part of the story. There's this unassuming shepherd boy who goes out to fight for the entirety of the Israelite army. He was confident because he knew that the battle belonged to God. And does God lose his battles? I said, does God lose his battles? I said, does God lose his battles? No, God never loses his battles. So instead of, let's see, an armor with a sword and a shield, he goes out with what? A sling. And five smooth stones and a whole lot of faith. <laughs> so imagine the scene. You've got the two 
um, meeting in between two uh, hilltop mountain tops. They had come down to the valley. There's this massive warrior and this shepherd boy. You know, if you were a betting person, I doubt that you would put all your blue chips on David. And Goliath was beside himself with how ridiculous it was to see his opponent approaching him. Am I a dog? You send me out this little guy. But all it took was a stone that was perfectly slung into his forehead, Goliath's forehead, the battle. Bless you. <laughs> so going around here. And the battle was over. As Goliath, excuse me, as David told Goliath before they, uh, before the sling, the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. So maybe it had been a while before you read the, the whole story, but I think we're pretty familiar with it uh, in general. We know that little David, he threw a, a stone, slung it into Goliath's forehead, and, and defeated the giant. But what are we to do with that story? This was the story that we read for our, our VBS this week. What are we to do with that? Why is this in the scriptures? Yes, it's a, a cool story. It's very awesome, but what are we to learn from it? What are we to grasp from it? Is there something more here? Well, see, now going back to the superhero thing, we want to be the hero of the story, don't we? We want to be in control. We want to make sure that we are able to do things and, and exercise our free wills. The danger is that we take our comic book world or our superhero world or our uh, psychological world and then apply it to the scriptures. We read the Bible that way. And maybe that's the way that you've been taught somewhere down the long line to, uh, to read the Bible that way. Uh, a devotional book, maybe, or a teacher, or a preacher taught you to you know, find yourself in the story and look for the way to overcome the problem. David and Goliath is the perfect example for this because it's used this way all the time. You can kind of see where this is going. When you, when you see yourself as the hero, who are you going to see yourself as? David, right? I mean, you've been taught to be David. You have giants in your life. Giants that you were meant to conquer. They're big. They're scary. But this story is here to remind you that with God's help, whatever that means, with God's help, you can defeat them. Of course, it sounds really pious when you acknowledge it needs God's help, right? Because it sounds like you're giving him the glory. You can't do it alone. Right? I mean, David didn't even do that. And then you have your, your sling and your stones, and they become whatever tools or resources of your faith or, or whatever God has given you or equipped you with. And then you go out and you face your giants. And what happens when you go out and face your giants? What happens when you grab your stones and ask God for help and go down into the valley to meet Goliath? What happens when you head out to face your, your broken relationships, your medical problem, your job situation, your depression, your addiction, your weaknesses, your failures? Well, sometimes, by God's grace, you win. Sometimes, by God's grace, by God's grace alone, you see a victory. But then there are other times. And these other times are, uh, they happen way more than we would like to admit. Other times when we go out to the battlefield, we're armed with our slingshots. <laughs> we're armed with our resources and our tools. And we go to face our giants. We ask God for help. And we fail. Goliath has our bones for breakfast. The relationship didn't get fixed. Got worse. The cancer didn't go away. You still got fired. You're still struggling with depression. You gave in to your addiction. And let's just jump to the biggest giant of them all. 
death. You weren't able to save your loved one from death. And you aren't able to escape it either. All the smooth stones of science and medicine haven't been able to slay that giant. <coughs> Friends, if you're the hero of the story, you're setting yourself up for terrible disappointment at best. And at worst, a loss of faith. There's something more. There's something better that God is showing us through David and Goliath. And if we'll stop trying to see ourselves as the hero of the storm, we might just start to see what God's up to. And I said we, we read from the Jesus Storybook Bible. And again, if you don't have that book, if you know some kids that want that, please see me afterward. Um, what I love about this book is that at the end of each story, it kind of picks out the big stories of the scriptures, especially the Old Testament ones. And at the end of each story, it points the reader in the right direction. It gives them just a, a whisper, just, just a little nod at what the story is about. For example, listen to this, the end of the young hero and the horrible giant. After telling the story of David and Goliath, Jesus Storybook Bible says, Many years later, God would send his people another young hero to fight for them and to save them. But this hero would fight the greatest battle the world has ever known. Another young hero. A hero who would fight the greatest battle the world has ever known, my dear friends. I have good news for you this morning. You are not David. <laughs> You're not David. You're not the hero of the story. You have a better hero. Jesus is the hero. And he has come to save you. Adam Ford has this great online comic that says it in a way that I love. And so I want to read it for you. His comic is Paul, good news, we are not David. And at the very end of it, he writes, but if we realize that we're not David and we put Jesus in his rightful position as king, conqueror, God, hero, we can't lose ever because Jesus is the one who stood toe to toe with the overpowering giant of sin, death, and hell. And Jesus is the boy who faced death like a lamb led to slaughter. And Jesus defeated the monster on behalf of his people. And Jesus is pleased to give his people the spoils of his victory. Jesus is David. And he says, we are the helpless Israelites. <laughs> and Goliath is dead. What do we do with the story of David and Goliath? Why is it there? What's it pointing us towards? What are we supposed to get out of it? It's not to empower you to go and face the giants in your life. It's to point you in faith to the greatest hero, Jesus, who went and fought the lion for you. In fact, the entire scriptures point us this way, to Jesus. And we still look around. We know that the world is not the way that it should be. And we need order for the chaos. We need help for the helpless. We need life in the face of death. But we're not the ones who are going to do that. Jesus is. And Goliath was never yours to fight. God had always planned on saving you by sending his son, this unassuming shepherd boy who went uncomplaining forth like a lamb led to slaughter with the only weapon of his innocent suffering and death on a cross. And by his death and resurrection, the head of the enemy has been crushed once and for all. And the victory, the victory that Jesus has won has been given to you, God's people who reap all the benefits because you belong to him by his word of promise to you. Good news, that which is broken will be restored. Your sins are forgiven. 
The evil one has lost all his power over you, and the grave cannot hold you. Jesus has slain your giants for you. Thanks be to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, our King, you counted the terrible cost of our salvation and sent your Son to give his life on the cross. Inspire our hearts to trust fully in his sacrificial victory, that we would follow in his way through death and into eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God, our King, you counted the terrible, that's a repeat, divine shepherd, you give life to your church through your holy word. Grant your people always to walk in your way and receive your blessings as they serve you in this world and in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Good Lord, preserve us from the ways of the wicked and prosper us in your paths. We commend to you all who bear office in our land and ask you to make them a blessing to them, those they serve. Grant to us every joy in the calling you have given to us that we might render service to you in our works of love toward our neighbor. Remember those in need of honest labor and daily bread, and give them gainful employment according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, give the strength of the Spirit to all who are suffering or in any kind of need, and especially to those we have been asked to remember, including Jane Wicks, Chris Turner, Barbara Stanisic, Nick Rebowitz, Don Wicks, Carol Roach, Marilyn Stone, Charlie Stone, Kathy Kern, Marianne Meehan, Janine, Tom Bowman, Jeff Smith, Tom Koppelman, Karen Cassidy, the family and friends of Charles Piper, and those we name in our hearts. That they may all have the courage and will to take up their crosses and follow the Savior through suffering into the joys of life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you have set before us life and death, blessing and curse in your holy word. Now at the altar, through his own word, your son sets before us his own body and blood. Grant that all who receive the sacrament today might do so with prepared and penitent hearts, rejoicing in your gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation for the sake of Jesus, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we have peace with our God, we now get to share that peace with one another.
Cristian. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and this true blood strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith, now and to life everlasting, depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
some, some chats, some good chats. God's blessings on your week go with the abounding grace of our Lord. Amen.